Hi, in this session, you are actually going to work on quite a number of ASP.NET web controls that will allow us to develop an interface as shown right here. Now, this is actually a web form under the name of Manage Prospect Page.ASPX. Now, this web form currently right now has a grid view control. This grid view control has already been bounded to the prospect table inside the database. Where is the prospect table? Let us have a look. If I actually go to the server explorer, then if I actually right click on the prospect table and I show the table data, you will notice that the prospect table will consist of these information. Like for example, the first record is trying to describe a prospect having the name called Linda. The prospect email is linda at yahoo.com the prospect date of birth and as well as this field is trying to go and describe that this prospect record is actually a female why do we know that it is a female thanks to the help of the gender table the gender table is describing three records right now and you will notice that the second record female is having an identity key field value of two okay let's come back to the browser so the grid view has already been defined and set up so that it can work with the prospect table but I hope you have a feeling that it is not only just working with the prospect table it is also working with the gender table or else how will the grid view be able to go and show male female or undisclosed in this column here right in this column here instead of like one two or three right now this grid view control also allows the user to go and click on edit in order to go and edit the respective prospect record you will notice that this current row that i have clicked the edit but, uh, link is right now showing all the details in the form of uh, input controls like text box and this one has already been customized in order to have a drop down list interface for the user to go and select meaningful information then the user can actually click the update now let me edit again let's just say that this one is Daniel uh, low then if I actually click on the update you will notice that Daniel low is reflected here and let us actually have a look at the prospect table and let me actually refresh this table let us see whether the database table has already been updated with Daniel low as you can see the web form has successfully channeled the changes or send the changes to the database and the database will record it down okay so in this part of the session we are actually going to find out how are we going to develop up this web form to provide all the functionalities that you have seen at the browser here so let us actually begin number one I will definitely need to go and delete away this uh, manage prospect page.aspx so that I can develop something from ground up so that you can appreciate more on the development process. So I'm going to delete it right now. So right now notice that I'm deleting the manage prospect page. It has already been permanently deleted and I'm going to save all changes and let me go to the browser here let me refresh right and you will notice that the file or the resources cannot be found so I'm not cheating here okay <laughs> now <clears throat> I'm going to add a web form inside this uh, prospect management folder so I'm going to add a new web form and this new web form is actually going to be uh, a web form that uses the master page and the name of this web form is manage prospect page then after that I will actually click the add button and I will define that this web form is going to use the site.master so that the navigation will do its proper configuration and I will actually save so right now you notice that I have already created a blank uh, ASP.NET web form and I'm going to proceed to get connected with the database but what are the tools available for me to go and get this web form work together with the database is the web form 
going to work directly with the database. No, 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 no. The web form is actually going to work with the entity diagram that we have defined inside the data access layer folder here. Now, the entity diagram that I have defined is actually being described inside this webadb.edmx file. Okay, so how am I supposed to go and get the web form to link up with the entity diagram that you have seen just now? Right? There must be a control, a control that must be easily used or else no one is going to use .NET technologies, right? So I'm going to the toolbox and I'm going to have a good guessing game. Is this something to do with standard? No. Is this something to do with data? Yes. And I'm going to select Entity Data Source. <laughs> so I'm going to actually click on this one and you notice that I've already added an Entity Data Source. Now, Entity Data Source is blank. Right? It is not usable at all if we do not set it up. So I want to set up to go and use the Prospect Entity. How am I going to do it? I need to go and configure its data source. Is this grid view? No, this is not grid view yet. Okay, okay, okay now. So right now, the name, the connection that I'm going to use is the web a db entities. And then after that, I'll take a look. The, the default container name is web a db entities. So far, so good. And the entity name that I want to go and work with is prospects. And I want to have all the prospect information to be updatable, deletable, and I'm not going to make it insertable, okay? Right, for the purpose of this demonstration. Now then, I'm going to click finish. And it seems like everything looks fine. So right now, I'm going to save this, and I'm actually going to uh, run it, uh, check out the browser to see whether there are any errors, and notice that there's no error, and there's no grid view. Why? Because I have not defined a grid view yet. I haven't defined a grid view yet, okay? So let us go back to the Visual Studio.net interface here. And right now, I need to go and work on the grid view, right? So I will go back. I will stop the debugging process. I'll go to the toolbox session. And I will definitely be able to go and find my sweet grid view here. And I'm going to double click to add. So I've already added a grid view control into the web form and I'm going to choose a data source. Now what data source am I going to specify? I'm going to specify entity data source 1. Why is it called entity data source 1? Because the entity data source control that I've added here is actually having an ID of is actually having an ID of entity data source 1. Let us take a look at the ID. Okay, you will notice that the entity data source control is having an ID of entity data source 1. Now entity data source 1 seems not very ID friendly. So it is a good practice that I will put the entities involved which is called prospects. Okay, that is the entity that I've selected. Right, so I'm going to rename the ID of this and definitely it will have the changes being reflected. Then I come back to the grid view and specify it again. So right now, I've specified the grid view to use prospect entity data source. Now, just now you saw paging effect, right? So I'm going to enable paging. Uh, was there any sorting effect? Though I did not show, but should be capable of doing it. Uh, am I going to allow the grid view to provide the editing effect? Yes, of course, right? Users would like to go and edit something. What about deleting? Yes, of course. What about selection? Let us leave it for your uh, further or future experimentation. So right now, I've already specified everything and I'm actually going to uh, uh, save everything, save my work. And I'm actually going to try going to the web browser here and I'm going to refresh. Wow. Wow, look at that. Did you see that? The grid view is right now capable of showing all the information that is drawn out from the database. I see Linda, I see James, I see Robo, but is it editable? Is it editable? Yes, I think so, right? So I'm going to edit Linda, and I will say that this one is Linda, my sweetheart, right? My sweetheart, okay, my sweetheart. And then after that, I'm actually going to uh, click the update, so Linda, my sweetheart, 
then after that uh, definitely I would like to go to the prospect table in order to go and find out whether it has already been reflected whether the changes has been reflected ah oh, yes it is what no coding of course there should be coding it's just that uh, initially we can actually come up with a uh, with a quick and dirty um, interface and functionalities and then after that we can further customize it by using uh, coding right so let's come back to the uh, browser here right what else what else I can actually um, I can actually sort I can actually sort by email sort by full name yes it is sortable right and I can do some paging notice that I can do some paging now let's come back here um, notice that the grid view control has already been set to automatically generate all these columns right in other words that it has a default property that we need to go and set so that the grid view will not automatically generate these columns why why should we not allow the grid view to automatically generate these columns see this prospect id prospect id if you go to the database level if you go to the database level for the prospect are we able to modify the values inside the first field prospect record ID can I change this one to 100 notice that it cannot be modified at all it cannot be modified at all in fact the text are all grayed out right because it's a primary key it's a very important key it is not editable at all but yet but yet inside the browser you notice that when I click edit this field is editable so what if I change this one to like 110 what is going to happen if I click update notice that there will be an error where is the error the property prospect record ID is part of the object's key information and it cannot be modified it cannot be modified okay now let's come back to here so in other words one lesson learned is that never let the grid view to auto generate uh, columns but I usually let it auto auto generate columns to be sure that the grid view has successfully bounded to the database okay right you get the idea now let's come back over here so how am I supposed to further configure the grid view control right in fact we need to go and do up to a particular level whereby uh, this one should not be one uh, one three one something like that it should be mail 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 and this one should be undisclosed am I right and this one should be a drop-down list interface not a text box so there are quite a number of customization effort that we need to proceed in this video so I'm coming back to the Visual Studio Donut interface here and I'm actually going to further um, further deal with this uh, grid view and I'm actually going to select edit columns notice that grid view got this edit columns and so these are the available fields and these are the selected fields and notice that there's no column for me to edit do you know why because they are all auto generate fields so I'm actually going to uncheck this one and I'm actually going to click the OK button what happened right notice that right now the grid view is no longer capable of auto generating columns so if I refresh this one you will notice that there will be some great changes here notice that no columns are actually being displayed for one reason I have already specified that um, I have already specified that it will not auto generate columns so I'm going to add a new column what is the new column that I'm going to add it is going to be a bound field and the bound field is actually going to be the full name of the prospect so what is the data field involved if I actually take a look at the uh, entity diagram it is actually called prospect full name and I'm actually going to click the OK button here I'm actually going to click the OK button here so I've already defined a bound field now definitely I will definitely save my work and then I will actually refresh in order to go and see whether I can uh, be able to find my full name here is it sortable yes it is sortable so I have already defined my own column now I failed to go and show the entity diagram to tell you why I specified prospect full name so let me actually take a look notice that it is prospect full name right the entity data source is using the prospects entity so that's why I must actually be clear what are the available properties that I can leverage on
okay so let me actually try to go and continue my work 